Hey guys, uh, okay, today we'll be talking about the lymphatic drainage of the thorax, which I mainly mean about the thoracic duct. Okay, uh, let us talk in general about the lymphatic drainage of the entire body. Of the entire body, so I'm just drawing a rough diagram, don't mind it. Uh, yeah. So, okay, try to just consider, uh, this is the head region, neck, and this is the thorax, and this is the abdomen. We know the structures dividing the thorax and the abdomen is the diaphragm, that is, thoracoabdominal diaphragm. And these as the lower limb here, we have the pelvis region plus perineum region, these are the upper limb. So, entire body is drained by one type of lymphatic drainage and only a part of it is drained by other type of lymphatic drainage. So, let us talk about both the type of lymphatic drainage. So, right side of the head, right side of the neck and right side of the thorax and this right upper limb. So, which I have marked here with the green, right side of the head, right neck and right part of the thorax and right upper limb is drained by the right, I'm sorry, right lymphatic duct, right lymphatic duct. And uh, the re in remaining part of it, uh, this remaining part, uh, left side of uh, head, neck, left thorax, entire abdomen, lower limb, all of them get drained into the thoracic duct. Thoracic duct. This is the general view about the uh, I mean lymphatic drainage of the entire body. So, uh, what are the what is it, tributaries? I mean, just like uh, branches draining into the main veins, like what are the trunks that are draining into these respective ducts? Yeah. So, when you consider this as the right lymphatic trunk, I mean, uh, right lymphatic duct. So, the structures coming are from the head, from the head region, right jugular trunk, from the head region right jugular trunk and from the right upper limb you get a right subclavian trunk and from the right part of the thorax you get right bronchomediastinal trunk so all these three structures will be draining into uh, our right lymphatic duct right lymphatic drug and where is this going and finally draining it will drain into the right venous angle right venous angle this is called the right venous angle what is this venous angle the jugular subclavian angle is called the venous angle what is that jugular subclavian angle the angle formed by the right jugular vein and right subclavian vein is called the right jugular subclavian angle or simply called the right venous angle okay so this right thoracic duct will be draining into this right venous angle nothing but the right jugular subclavian angle okay this is about the uh, right lymphatic uh, duct which drains uh, the right parts of right head neck right thorax and the right upper limb now let us talk about the remaining part of the body okay uh, the remaining part of the body is drained by the thoracic duct so similarly when you consider this as a thoracic duct it will receive the tributaries from the head that is same just like the right lymphatic duct here also you find the left jugular trunk from the left upper limb left subclavian trunk and from the left thorax left bronchomediastinal 
mediastinal trunk. So where it is going to drain uh, finally is same as the when you see, when you have seen on the right side. This is simply to the left venous angle. Left venous angle is formed by the left uh, jugular vein, left subclavian vein together form left venous angle. So the thoracic duct will be finally draining into the left venous angle left venous angle so this is the general view about uh, this uh, thoracic duct now uh, let me tell you about the course of this thoracic duct so how it's happening and all uh, okay so when you consider this as l1 vertebra l2 vertebra and this is l3 vertebra and above this you find T12 vertebra. So this thoracic duct is a continuation of cisterna chile. Cisterna chile is a triangular dilatation present on the bodies of L1, L2, L3. See like this. It is a triangular dilatation present on the bodies of L1, L2, L3. This cisterna chile will be continuing as the thoracic duct. Therefore, the thoracic duct begin at the lower border of this uh, uh, T12. And, um, you know, where the T12 uh, will be having, uh, will be, I'm sorry, yeah. At the T12 region will be having this uh, diaphragm. So, via the aortic orifice, it will be entering the thorax region. In the thorax region, it ascends up vertically. Again, at the T5 vertebra level, it will be taking the left curve from right to the left. So, till T5, it will be ascending straightly. At the T5 level, it will take a turn from right to the left and then again ascend up like this along the left border of this esophagus and finally it raises and drains into the left venous angle so when it has raised the summit has reached at the level of the c7 vertebra so this is all about the uh, course of the thoracic duct let me tell you once again it is a continuation of the cisterna chile a triangular dilatation on the bodies of l1 l2 l3 vertebra we know at the level of the t12 vertebra will be having the diaphragm at this t12 region will be having the aortic orifice through which this um, thoracic duct begin and enter the thorax region at the level of t5 it takes the left turn and run along the left border of the esophagus and finally raises and drains into the left venous angle the summit of the rays will be reaching the level of c7 vertebra c7 vertebra I have already told you what is this right venous angle uh, angle formed by the left jugular vein and left subclavian vein is called the left venous angle okay left venous angle and uh, from here you can uh, easily tell out the relations so this is the right part this is the left part these are a bit easy among all the relations to the left we will be having the um thoracic aorta or the descending thoracic aorta which at the level of the t12 will be continuing as abdominal aorta and on the left side you will be having the azygos vein will be having the azygos vein okay uh, and uh, yeah coming to the anterior relations coming to the anterior relation we'll be having the diaphragm if you seen here it is a diaphragm and you'll be having the esophagus this is the esophagus being continued anteriorly and you also find the pericardium pericardium anteriorly and now coming to the posterior region. So, we, if you have uh, some knowledge about this azygos, hemiazygos, axillary azygos, 
so they cross the t8 level and drain into the and drain into the azygos vein behind the heart therefore the posterior relations become azygos i mean um, hemiazygos and the axillary hemiazygos vein so now finally anteriorly you'll be having the diaphragm and the esophagus and the pericardium and posteriorly you will find the hemiazygos vein and axillary hemiazygos vein to the left side you find the descending thoracic aorta which after continues as abdominal aorta and to the right side you will find the azygos vein to the right side you find the azygos vein these are all the relations of the thoracic duct uh, these are relations of thoracic duct and um, yeah now coming finally to the tributaries tributaries comes like uh, the main tributaries are right and left intestinal I'm sorry intestinal lymph trunks and right and left mediastinal i'm sorry uh it's i'm sorry really sorry lumbar lymph trunks okay so the main uh, tributaries comes here like the right and left uh, intestinal lymph trunks right and left lumbar lymph trunks okay some additionally also there some additional tributaries which i've named earlier um left jugular trunk left subclavian trunk left bronchomediastinal trunk okay these are some of the additional uh, tributaries 75 percent of our body i have already told you is drained by this thoracic duct except the right part of head neck right upper limb and the right thorax region and the right thorax region okay uh, so i would like to tell you something about like this yeah so i have told you entire this region is uh, supplied by i mean drained by the right lymphatic drug so in the i'm sorry in the abdomen you'll be having the cisterna chile into the cisterna chile uh, the lower limb drains pelvis drains perineum drains and finally sister nakaili drains into the thoracic duct and the thoracic drugs will be draining into the left venous angle okay guys uh, this is all about the uh, thoracic duct its course relations tributaries and it's important oh yeah finally i forgot something like yeah thoracic duct when you see its content will be milky white in color why so it is it is mainly because of the presence of the product of fat digestion namely the chyle presence of chyle will give the appearance of milky uh, in color and uh, it will be having some extra features like a beaded appearance like this with the presence of large number of valves and the length would vary like 38 to 45 centimeters and it's the longest lymphatic dry i mean lymphatic vessel that can be seen via the naked eye that is extended from the abdomen till the root of the neck okay guys thank you for watching my video if you do like please do subscribe to my channel and share it with all your friends